And um, I, I have not only the, the, the privilege of going last, if that's a privilege, but, but I really did have the privilege of reading Andrew's paper first and, 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 and you know, in collaboration with Tom as we organized this, right, really thinking about what I actually want to write uh, and present. And, and so in many ways, you know, I, I'm, I'm explicitly trying to build off um, what Andrew is asking us to do uh, and what others today have asked us to do to, to in, a, in a very general sense, broaden our conception of, of what is urban or, or what is urban revitalization, community revitalization is what I'll call sort of the, the term that I'll use most. Um, and and you know, how does it relate to immigration in a broad variety of ways? And, and it's, um, you know, again, building on, on um, you know, Andrew, I, I um, want to argue for, for um, a, a sort of finer-grained understanding and appreciation of migrant-led transnational uh, development um, as a, a form of um, not just urban development, but uh, more broadly uh, community development, which I define as something that involves the place-based physical investments um, that, that most people think of when you say revitalization, or at least most people are in one of my fields, right, in city planning, right? I'm also a historian. Um, uh, and and uh, I also want to build on something that, that uh, Susan Walker said earlier very much, right, uh, on, on the idea that um, you know, there are some ways that we can think about immigration um, and, and immigrant communities' relationships with receiving communities as uh, sort of processes that, that can, at times, uh, promote very widely shared prosperity. Right? Um, my, my argument, sort of generally, right, is, is that though, um, you know, thinking transnationally, if, if we as, as scholars and particularly um, you know, thinking uh, actively as planners, policy makers, uh, development professionals, um, you know, those are the folks that I teach most of the time um, in, 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 in the graduate teaching that I do. Um, you know, I think if we look, to look at transnational development, just as what hometown associations do, Right. Um, as, as just the, the place-based investments and, and, and remittances um, and sort of development in, in sending communities, right, um, in the Mexican towns that you're talking about, um, you know, which is, is you know, by and large how particularly development economists and others talking about transnational development uh, conceive of that process, right, uh, we're missing uh, a huge wider world. Uh, that, that, in, you know, some, you know, that includes a, a much wider range of activities, some of which enable those place-based investments, right? Um, and, and I think, you know, uh, if we look at a, a much fuller sort of ecosystem, if you will, of transnational civil society organizations or community organizations broadly, um, and follow people, right, and, and sort of trace their network through a variety of activities and, and institutions, um, you know, uh, we, we can come to a much sort of better understanding and perhaps be in a better position to support uh, what we call migrant-led transnational development. Um, so I'm going to talk about a very sort of, in, in some ways, small case study, but that's a sort of window into a wider world, I, I hope. Um, and and you know, while there are not a lot of African or especially Nigerian immigrants in the United States, um, but especially compared to Mexicans, right? I mean, just telling a very sort of large-scale story, in some ways, I'm a very small uh, story in terms of the scale. Um, but, but I hope that, that what um, you know, I'm able to get to uh, is, is uh, a more complicated story about um, receiving community uh, you know, new immigrant relations, uh, particularly uh, in, in black communities, right? Um, in in African-American communities, which is where uh, black immigrants tend to live, right? Um, and and you know, African-Americans and uh, their historical disadvantages, right, and discrimination that they've experienced, I think, raise some of the thorniest and most complicated questions about um, immigration, urban revitalization, in a wide variety of ways that I think we, can, we can talk about more later if you want. So I'm, I'm going to walk you through uh, a bit of the argument. Um, and it's going to be about Philadelphia, but to some extent, uh, actually to a great extent, the networks of people and institutions that I'm talking about extend to Atlanta, Baltimore, Providence, Rhode Island, New York City, uh, Ohio, um, Minnesota and other places that, especially Liberians, but also other African immigrants have, um, have, have, have settled. Um, and, and they extend not only to cities and towns in Liberia, but uh, to the, uh, mainly to the, to the set of um, you know, three or four uh, uh, you know, nations uh, in West Africa, uh, the four nations in West Africa that have something that they call like the Civil War, some of us call it the Liberian Civil War, right? Um, but, um, 
through Liberia, uh, Sierra Leone, uh, Guinea, and um, Ivory Coast, um, where a lot of Liberians still live as they after they left Liberia. Um, so that's the, the sort of geography uh, in which I'm, I'm talking I'll talk mostly about So I'll walk you through the argument, I'll elaborate a little bit on the diversity of Liberian and, and associated uh, Pan-African civil society in Philadelphia, uh, and then examine in some of the details some of the Pan-African networks um, that, that get us to think, uh, I hope, uh, a little bit about, um, you know, much, much like you know, Andrew did with, with Mexicans, um, how the urban revitalization or, or community uh, development, um, which I think brought up broadly assumes, um, activities of Liberians and, and their allies among uh, black immigrants and, and African Americans um, you know, produce um, you know, forms of, of, of community revitalization here in, in West and Southwest Philadelphia, talking about a mile that way. That's, that's um, really the space in which I'll be talking. Um, and, and so, you know, broadly, again, the argument uh, is, is basically that you know, transnational civil society is, is a diverse field of institutions engaged in, in you know, widely diverse uh, forms of community and economic development, not just the building projects and enterprise development that, that most scholars of transnational development uh, focus on, um, but also a variety of mutual aid. Right? That, that, you know, it's easy to dismiss as not development, um, but I, I, I I won't argue with that in a sense, um, and, and say that these you know, for various things really do quite explicitly complement and in many ways one another. Um, um, my, my, my sort of second point right, that I've basically already made right, is, is transnational organizations and activities really engage, um, you know, sometimes engage in impact sending and receiving communities in very meaningful ways. Um, and, and, and finally, more broadly, right, that, and, and um, this is a, a more speculative point. I, I wonder what uh, that, that, that I hope will um, you know, maybe spark some, some conversation, um, maybe some debate about this. Um, but um, in particular, I think that migrant and led transnational development can, can maybe be more constructively framed as, as sort of urban and community revitalization um, than sort of in, the, in the narrower sort of terms of traditional development. And, and in, in all of this, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, if, if, if you're um, you know, uh, grappling with Saskia Sassen at all, right, um, I, I'm, you know, to, to a great extent, uh, grappling with uh, development economists, right, who have, um, you know, sometimes a, a pretty, you know, a nuanced and, and um, you know, understanding of migrant-led transnational development, but, but uh, you know, to a great extent have, have really uh, critiqued it and, and oftentimes dismissed it um, as, as uh, inefficient investments and failing economies, right? Um, you can see the rest, right? Um, and, and much more popularly, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, picking a bone with, you know, not impression of what's easy, you know, example from, from this, but um, it's a very widespread um, popular perception. Right, that, that all of the remittances and, and migrant-led transnational development do is, is drain capital, right? That, that might otherwise, or should otherwise, be invested in the United States, right? Um, we don't hear academics saying that a lot, but um, it's, it's a widespread sort of popular belief in our food fight about immigration. Right? Um, John um, you know, as, as, as an example of um, what I think is a, is a very widespread pattern among um, African community leaders in Philadelphia and Baltimore and Atlanta and so on. Right? Um, and and um, you know, he's, he's you know, a special guy, um, but, but the pattern of involvement in a wide variety of organizations uh, that operate in different places um, is, is uh, I think, much bigger. Right? So, um, He's uh, um, sort of at the top of the list, right? He, he has been served on the national boards, uh, nat national boards, and the Pennsylvania uh, boards of, um, you know, really the two sort of biggest sorts of uh, transnational organizations: the ULAA, right, the Union of Operating Associations in the Americas, um, which, which really, um, you know, is that that's really the sort of uh, premier uh, institution of Liberian leadership. In the, in the United States, um, and, and in many ways the, the foremost voice of uh, political reform, um, and, and, and to a great extent also um, advocacy for social, social service provision uh, for Liberians in the United States, but also to some extent for Liberia. Um, the Lofa County Association is, uh, to, to a great extent, the, the, the equivalent of, of um, 
the, the institutions that Andrew was talking about, the transnational uh, hometown associations and federations thereof. Um, there are hometown associations uh, in Liberia and other parts of West Africa, um, or that work in Liberia and other parts of West Africa, but um, the, the county associations uh, tend to do larger, you know, raise more money, do larger scale projects. Um, and I'll say more about them uh, in a moment. Um, these, uh, you know, part of the University Alumni Association, that may not seem uh, like it's you know, important to development. Um, but uh, that, and, and, and I also think that, um, you know, some of the professional associations that librarians uh, are, are engaged in are really important for um, uh, sort of managing um, networks of um, elite community leaders. Right? And that's really who I'm, who I'm talking about. And, 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 Talking about their relations to their constituents to a great extent. Um, he's a minister to at least two churches, sometimes more. Uh, one in Liberia that runs a school that he raises money for to save enough to support it uh, from here. Um, he, in, he's, he's sort of really day job is that he's the director of the, the Agape Senior Center uh, for Refugees in West Philly. Um, uh, two miles that way, maybe three. Um, and, and, but but you know, in his night job, uh, he's also the proprietor for a cleaning service, uh, mostly commercial clients in, in, in this region, um, mostly employs uh, Liberians, and in, in that sense is, is sort of part of the transnational sort of uh, uh, labor market, right? Um, he, is, he remains the coordinator of a local farm collective in, in, in Liberia. Um, and you may be scratching your head and, and, and asking yourself, what is this guy talking about all these things as transnational organizations? Um, all of them, in one, in one form or another, um, you know, have people in Liberia and people uh, in, in the United States um, in, engaged in their work, right? Uh, and, and that's why I, you know, in a very broad sense, I'm calling these uh, transnationally engaged or involved uh, organizations. Um, and the last two at the bottom, um, are these pan-African institutions in, in Philadelphia, one created by our, our last mayor at the bottom, and the other one created by a group of, of African, um, Caribbean, and African-American community leaders, um, largely uh, uh, to, to promote sort of conflict resolution, but later other things uh, in Philadelphia. I'll, I'll say a little bit about that um, later in, in, in some of the things that the Mayor's Commission does. Um, but I hope what this um, you know, picture gives you a, a, a good sense of is that um, many community leaders, many West African and East African community leaders in, in Philadelphia, the two major sub Saharan African groups we have uh, here, um, are engaged in you know, a wide variety of things to do, as, as Reverend Jala has, has sort of said to us, you know, everything I can to help my community. And his sort of definition of my community has changed over to include not just Liberians, but necessarily other black immigrants and, and African Americans with whom we live. Right? Um, so, you know, taking a step back out of that and trying to sort of categorize these, um, I developed this, this idea that there, you know, um, there are sort of three general types of transnational community and economic development institutions and activities uh, in Liberian and associated Pan African Philadelphia, um, all of which work in some way in West Africa and here. Um, and almost all of which work on social issues, as well as physical development. Um, um, and, and all of which, in many ways, are, are, are working to sort of rebuild Liberian and, and uh, African civil society uh, in the Liberian context as, as part of Liberian reconstruction after the, the Civil War here in the 1990s. Um, and transnational work um, you know, in the Liberian context took on, uh, uh, as, as Reverend John says, right, really new meaning. Right? And transnational organizations took on new roles as a result of the, of the Civil War. Um, partly, and again, I'll, I'll let you, you read my long quotes. I won't do that. Uh, um, <clears throat> you know, partly as uh, many refugees uh, to the United States were are uh, community leaders in Liberia, right? um, and uh, also partly as um, people sought to, to sort of um, manage the diaspora in some sense, right? and those people in particular sought to, in some ways, extend their influence transnationally right? and, and continue to lead their communities transnationally. Um, <clears throat> let me talk a bit about um, county associations and hometown associations. Um, as in the, the Latin American context, um, they 
you know, are commonly, commonly built schools, health clinics, hospitals, provide equipment to schools and, and, and health institutions, right? Um, roads, bridges, wells, right? Um, and transportation and, and, and particularly water infrastructure. Um, the Grand Cadet Association from, from that county in Liberia built an internet cafe in the county seat to, to sort of promote people's um, you know, access to the internet, including to be able to you know, connect with people here much more. Um, every Liberian um, uh, county association that, that, that I've uh, studied with um, provides uh, scholarships and, and to a great extent, really social support, a variety of you know, formal and informal social support and uh, mutual aid to members here. Um, and we've done that almost always before they've invested in any physical development projects. I think you, you know, in a sense, see that priority articulated in the uh, Sino County Association's um, mission statement ripped from its website, right? um, in which you know, the mission is first to promote unity and peace in the Sino community in the American diaspora, and second right, to contribute to infrastructure and resource development in Liberia. Um, Samuel Slavion uh, actually leads uh, the past president of the Sino County Association, actually returned to Liberia about a year ago. Right. Um, you know, and, and I think this quote um, is, is uh, sort of a nice illustration of, of how uh, a lot of people think about sort of trying to manage migration, manage the diaspora across large space. I'm, I'm, I think I call right, librarians refugees, mm -hmm. and in a sense they are, right? and they have been moved into and yet, um, it's a critically important point to note that Liberians were on uh, something called temporary protected status, right? They, they were not uh, refugees in perpetuity. Um, and um, they are now on uh, a regularly renewed, and I forget if it's every 12 or 18 months, um, the status you get after TPS, right? Uh, which is a DED, Deferred Enforcement of Departure, right? And so Liberians were actually expected to go back. So I think that's a really important thing um, that, that, that colors the sort of context of people trying to manage the diaspora, its needs here, families' needs in Liberia, because a lot of people are expected to return. Um, another really important thing, uh, and I think the last thing I'll say about uh, county associations, is that the national chapter of each county association, the Liberian county associations, really handles the development projects in Liberia. It, it really holds the purse strings. There's some tension around that with, with you know, state-based or local chapters, but it's the transnational development entity. And the state chapters or local chapters um, are first and foremost, and not exclusively, but, but by and large focused on the needs of their members here. They do a little bit of um, uh, in, in investment in small projects in, in Liberia sometimes, but uh, for the most part, they're trying to make sure that uh, their members here are connected to, so that, and they are constituents, right? If you're members of family associations, they're often those sort of um, more middle class, and, and Africans, if you know anything about Africans, are incredibly diverse in terms of socioeconomic status, employment, education, et cetera, and that goes for Liberians, among other uh, African immigrants, right? Um, but um, the, the, the state chapters are, are largely responsible for sort of taking care of, of you know, people's needs and their families' needs, which back to sending money to people in Liberia, okay? It's really messy. That's the point, right? Okay. Um, a few other uh, points. So, so uh, moving on from, from county associations, part of my argument, right, is that in a sense social service or mutual aid, um, and, and I don't get this argument um, you know, from so, so much myself, as, as um, pretty much all of the the uh, use of community-based institutions that the IMR research assistants have interviewed in, in this little segment of a much longer project um, say, look, if I were taking care of my people, my community here, right, and their family's needs, I wouldn't have the social status, right? I wouldn't lose people's respect and trust, right? I wouldn't be in a position myself to have the credibility to go out and get in transnational development. That's something more complicated. Complex and something in many ways, right? Um, and, and I also wouldn't um, you know, have constituents behind me 
in, in that transnational work, right? Uh, and so that's really what I mean by, by mutual aid in the sense of social stability um, of Liberian communities here and in West Africa as, as almost a precondition to bigger investments in, in the physical developments. And you know, as someone who's done a little bit of study in Latin American, uh, particularly Mexican hometown associations, but more work in and, and supporting um, hometown associations. I think this goes for, 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 for Mexico for sure, and I, I think you know, we can broaden that at that point, you know, uh, perhaps globally, right? Um, Picking back in off of Andrew. Um, I think you know, the, the things that, uh, just, just a couple of those, the, the, the sort of small um, ethnic associations and mutual aid associations um, do, uh, you may be familiar with, it. I think this is one of the most important things they do, they, they, they play uh, oftentimes the, the sorts of roles that the, the mutual aid organizations of the Italians and Poles and other immigrants of a, a century ago played, um, especially in, in the form of social insurance, right? And especially death insurance, right? So um, African organizations in Philadelphia uh, do a, a fair bit of sending bodies right, of their deceased members back uh, to, to a particular West Africa. Um, and along with that, payments to their families uh, that in, in many cases have lost their main remittance centers, right? So an important form of, of social support. Um, again, to a certain extent, you know, much, much like other uh, older immigrants. Um, I also focus a bit in this paper on, on, on some social service organizations. Like this is the largest one that we've been um, really in. Africa and Philadelphia, but I think it's fair to say um, the African Cultural Alliance of North America, big problem, but, but really a Liberian organization. Um, it's mainly a social service organization that, that um, sort of has an arts and culture component initially to, to support, uh, sort of, uh, to do two things. One, to, to support Liberia's elite um, performing artists who have come here as refugees, uh, sometimes, you know, get off the plane and, and you know, have a refugee settlement. Folks there saying, you know, welcome to Philadelphia, and they'll we'll say, you know, thank you. I'm not sure who you are, but uh, you know, my wife's on tour, uh, and um, you know, we're we're going next to Minneapolis because she's you know, doing a concert there, right? So, um, you know, sorts of types of refugees, right? Um, <clears throat> but um, you know, a, a kind of also deployed arts and culture as a way to try to integrate um, Liberians here, the women, especially refugees, into social services here, right? Um, as, as, as sort of part of the cultural strategy um, among people who are often you know, uh, suspicious of, of the state and you know, large institutions, right? Um, <clears throat> but um, Akana, uh, like other, and they've gotten very into, if you can actually read the, the words at the, at the top, they've gotten very into uh, as a revenue generating strategy offering um, to the immigration services, and that's all on the left. Um, what's on the right is, is, is a sort of better list of their uh, various services. Um, <clears throat> And, and programs, um, but but one of the things that's especially interesting to me about Akana is that in sitting there on Chester Avenue, two miles that way, um, in, in an office, um, that, was, that was actually the, the first slide in, in my presentation. Um, of course, they're surrounded by other black immigrants from the Caribbean and, and, and maybe West Africa, um, and African Americans who have many of the same needs and have sort of come to this social service organization saying, hey, we need to not just be a, a you know, refugee serving uh, organization, but um, we want your services too. And, and, and you know, at this point, I, I think it's um, you know, their, their uh, proportion of uh, African Americans you know, that they serve in, in their programs overall is close to 50%, right? Um, and, and so in many ways, they branch out from being a refugee service organization, period. Um, and, and they were drawn very much also, I, I think, um, in interesting ways, into um, physical community economic development, um, mainly reviving and working to revitalize the Chester Avenue commercial corridor um, with its business association led by a second generation Jamaican. Right? Okay. Um, uh, you start to get a sense of the, the mess of Pan African uh, networks and relationships. Uh, Akana was also uh, then drawn into transnational work um, by its four constituents, or initial constituents, right, West African refugees coming and saying, you know, can you help my family in West Africa, right? Um, and so uh, at a certain point back um, eight years ago, Akana 
opened an office in Monrovia, the capital of Liberia, um, opened an office, though it's since closed in Freetown, Sierra Leone, um, and uh, established a sort of partnership with an organization in, in Ghana, in Accra, um, all as part of this, you know, trying to connect with and build constituencies transnationally, and offer the same sorts of integration or reintegration services, if you will, a variety of social services, um, to a transnational constituency. Let me close by saying a few things about Pan-African Philadelphia, right? Of course, you know, Liberia in the 19th century was a sort of transnational project of African Americans and some Africans. Uh, um, but, but, but I think, you know, the, the, this particular story that I'm telling goes much more out of the, the recent history, right, obviously, of, of, um, of a black immigrant settlement in Philadelphia, which, uh, if you can read this slide, um, is one of the most the, the, the gratiating, especially um, you know, Africans. Um, have, have moved largely in Philadelphia to uh, west and southwest Philadelphia and, and adjacent suburbs. Um, to some extent, in very small numbers since the 1960s when Nigerian and Ghanaian uh, immigrants came for especially academic uh, experiences. Um, uh, and, and accelerating in the 1980s with Ethiopian refugee resettlement, especially in the 1990s with uh, Sudanese and West African uh, refugee resettlement and immigration. Um, mainly in, in sort of working class neighborhoods of, of Philadelphia and adjacent suburbs, where also African Americans live, right? Um, this is a pattern nationally, right, that just reinforces uh, black segregation, right? Um, in the image of Southwest Philly, that, that happens to be Chester Ave. Um, certainly since the 80s and 90s, but accelerating in the 2000s, um, and then it was coming to a head in the 2000s. Um, there have been plenty of what I think of the sort of normal um, tensions between black immigrants and African Americans. Um, most dramatically, uh, and, and really most famously, uh, in, a, in a widely publicized case of a 13-year-old Liberian woman named Jacob Gray, who in 2006 was, was uh, severely beaten um, on his way home from, from school in Southwest Philly. Uh, and, and that incident and the publicity that it got um, really uh, brought out um, just about every sort of uh, community leader in West, I mean, lots of community leaders in, in African American West Philly, um, in um, you know, Pan African communities, or in you know, Black immigrant communities, um, and, and also in, in uh, you know, other you know, institutions. Uh, I think, you know, the American Burks and Chilcock is here from the Welcoming Center in Pennsylvania, it's right, an economic integration institution, very much got into this uh, activity. I'll show you. Forum of theirs, I think, in my next slide. Um, but, but political leadership, including our last mayor, John Street, who's on the right and you know, seated there, uh, and, and Jean Blackwell, who's our councilwoman for the West and parts of Southwest Philly, um, um, you know, uh, continued to build or, or, or invested much further in building um, you know, a, a sort of infrastructure within the city uh, government to reach out to, to black immigrants. Right? Um, Mayor Street founded the, uh, well, they together we established the um, Mayor's Commission for African and Caribbean Immigrant Affairs. Um, and and uh, they stepped up a variety, all these organizations stepped up a variety of what sort of people call bridging initiatives, right? Efforts to you know, get um, receiving communities, immigrant communities, um, you know, to, to start to talk with one another and sort of in many ways, uh, build a, a sort of more constructive politics of, of what Susan calls shared, shared prosperity, or, or you might also call shared, shared opportunity. Um, and uh, you know, this had been building, I, I think, um, in important ways in, in Africa, the Coalition of African Communities, which predates you know, 2006, it started around 2000, um, in part out of um, you know, some of the same sorts of tensions, and, and um, you know, including with uh, some important, so, so some of its founders were employees or unemployed of the Philadelphia's Human Relations Commission, an African-American, right? Um, and, and initially they were focused largely on conflict resolution between groups, uh, but increasingly they moved on to, to, to sort of be a forum for members to make their constituents to a wide variety of services through the sort of networks that people build, just social networks, right, um, through AFRICOM. Um, and, and a lot of this has led to things that I think are, are much more material. I right? get us back to, um, business development and the sorts of things that uh, transnational uh, development scholars and practitioners think about most of the time. Um, and and um, 
yet I, I want to continue to emphasize that those really built on the sort of conflict resolution, relationship building, and uh, people's ability uh, to take care of constituents and immediate needs. Right? Um, and so I, I'll simply end by um, you know, uh, talking briefly about the sorts of things that some pan-African organizations including the Mayor's Commission, the African Caribbean Business Council do, uh, and a couple of other um, uh, West African-led, uh, sort of pan-African development support groups uh, that are run by people who used to work with the World Bank and other traditional development institutions. And out of their critique of those development institutions with sort of limited appreciation for and engagement with community-based um, Activity, community economic development activity, um, particularly among Africans, um, have sort of started their own organizations um, based in Philadelphia, but with you know, very broad networks around the United States and um, not just West Africa. Um, ACDC, the African Caribbean Business uh, Council, um, the Marriage Commission, and uh, Afro Caribe all um, work, you know, organize, you know, have organized trade missions with West Africa, really promoting you know, enterprise development, especially in export and import. Um, uh, Africa Ribe um, and ACDC uh, do a variety of entrepreneurial uh, training and support and networking work. Um, Palm Solutions focuses much more on social enterprise and, and community projects after it initially sort of had a, a, a bigger vision of enterprise development. Um, you know, as it had to you know, sort of get more into social enterprise um, based on the, the, its constituents' uh, interests. Um, and, and again, all of these institutions, you know, I, I think, work necessarily first on things like conflict resolution um, to get themselves to uh, economic development um, and, and physical place-based development, both here and there. And I'll end there. Thank you for your attention.